time to crack open the sports page with the Orlando Sentinel and FM 96.9 The Games, Mike the Bulldog Bianchi. On JRR. Bulldog Sports Page brought to you by Thursday Night Football pregame action again tonight, 6 to 8. We're headed to Heathrow, Taco Bob. Casey Sports Bar in Heathrow. We're headed there with five pair of birthday birthday tickets, bucket specials. If you've never been to uh, Casey Sports Bar in Heathrow, really cool place. And uh, we'll be there ahead of the uh, Patriots Steelers game for Thursday Night Football. Hello there, doggy. I hear the Johnny, uh, the Edgar Winter Band is going to be at Earth Day birthday this year, playing Frankenstein. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about Frankenstein, the magic shooting last night was a horror movie. They lose. Uh, well, that was a great segue, by the way. The yeah, magic. that was uh, priceless. You should yeah. do rock and roll radio, man, with a <laughs> segue should. like that, and then talking about the Frankenstein or whatever it was yeah. band. A horror Ed- show Edgar for Winter the Magic Group. last night. They go down to the Cavs, 121 to 111, uh, despite Paolo Bancaro, by the way, scoring a career-best 42 points last night. They they still lost the game. Uh, how about this as a shooting percentage from three point range? Zero for twelve in the first half. Two of twenty three overall. That's right. They shot eight point seven percent from three point range <laughs> last night. Not good for the Magic. That's their second straight loss. The Franz did not shoot the ball well last night. Uh, he did score fourteen point points, but he was three of sixteen. From the field, um, Jalen Suggs goes down with an ankle injury last night. He's been playing really well. Um, he went down in the second quarter, did not come back into the game. So that's not good. Jonathan Isaac was out again last night. I'm a little worried about the magic in that, okay, they went on that nine-game winning streak, right? Now, um, you know, they've got everybody's attention and opponents are going to be taking them a lot more seriously now. Are they going to be able to respond to that? All right, listen, let, they- let, let, last night was an off night, obviously. Let's put it behind us. It's done. It's over with. Let's just head to Friday when they host Detroit. Look at that yeah, glass Detroit's half terrible. full over yeah. there. Well, if they lose to Detroit, then the glass won't be half full anymore because Agreed. Detroit's terrible. <laughs> They're 2-19 and 19 this year, worst team in the league. So hopefully the Magic can get back on the winning track on Friday night. Uh, just as I suspected, um, the I don't know if it's going to be an exodus or not, but Florida State's uh, one of their star wide receivers, Johnny Wilson, uh, announced yesterday he's skipping the Orange Bowl and will declare for the NFL draft, so they won't have the big six foot seven, two hundred and forty pound receiver Johnny Wilson at the Orange Bowl. I wonder if Keon Coleman, uh, their other star, star, talk about how important these bowl games are. But for these guys, is it is it worth the risk of injury no. when you're going to be a you know first maybe a second round draft pick? So Pat and I were talking you, about it yesterday. Remember Pat? And you're like, you know. I hate to see it, but you don't blame them. Outside of the playoff game in the national playoff games in the national championship, these bowls are now just uh, an afterthought, Bulldog. Although for Florida State, you would like them to finish on the. Yeah, it would be great if they finished unbeaten and they were the only unbeaten team. Then they could, you know, I don't know if they would pull a Danny White and self declare a national championship, but. If they were the only unbeaten team, that'd be pretty cool, would it not? Oh, it'd yeah, be great. No doubt. Hey, Bulldog, what's this story out of Jacksonville? This former employee who built the uh, the Jags out of twenty two million dollars. Yeah, I guess there was some sort of weird credit card scheme that was going on. Yeah, the the former employee uh, was one of their financial guys. Amit Patel was his <laughs> name, and yeah, he uh, yeah. He, they had some sort of weird way of doing credit card. Uh, what was it? He was he was charging stuff to the team and buying like you know all sorts of you know he bought a condo in Ponte Vedra, <laughs> Ponte Vedra Beach. He bought I'm a, put this condo uh, on my credit card. <laughs> yeah, except it wasn't a credit. It was it, I, I don't I, like I don't a know line of credit about. or something. Something along yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it was. <laughs> oh my but god. It, yeah, but he bought one of what? What's the Elon Musk cars? A Tesla. Tesla. Yeah. Yeah, he bought like some fancy Tesla, charged it to the team, twenty-two million dollars worth of stuff. Good God! Did he charge to the team? And I guess they finally caught him. 
but it, it, I guess it was going on for a year or two. He was he was charging all of this stuff to the team. You know what? By does, the way, does, Jack, hold on. Doesn't that just show how much money flows through an NFL franchise that it took them a year to figure out they were missing twenty two million bucks? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Have you ever heard the story about speaking of NFL salaries and how much money is in pro sports? Drew, Drew Bledsoe. This was way back when Drew Bledsoe, when he was playing for the Patriots. All right, this is one of my favorite favorite stories of all time. Uh, his dad got in in his car with him with Drew Bledsoe, and his dad was going to get something out of the glove compartment, and he looked in there, and there were two checks, mm-hmm. like you know, stuffed in the glove compartment for a hundred and eighty thousand dollars each. I guess they were Drew Bledsoe's paychecks. And he asked Bledsoe about him. He goes, he goes, yeah, uh, yeah. I forgot, I forgot about those. I just I put them in my glove compartment. Must be nice, man. You remember right? that? There was a similar story with another one. <laughs> that one I do remember. And there was another one where uh, the the guys just living just off his endorsement stuff. That was Gronk. Gronk. Okay, yeah, yeah. But then there was a the kid that was still mowing his parents' yard or something. Remember that? <laughs> It's just it's sickening the amount they make. But. Here's here's an uncashed check for ten thousand dollars. I'll keep it. Uh, just hold yeah, on to right. it. Put it in right. the glove box, babe. <laughs> Speaking of the Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence clarified yesterday the Jags did have a golf cart available to him when he was le- you know leaving the field uh, on Monday Night Football after he got injured, and everybody was making a big deal about it, including Pat Lynch. Why didn't they have a golf cart? For Trevor Lawrence, he go, he goes. They did have a golf cart. I chose not to use it, so he he was toughing it out. Wait, to Bulldog. The for field. the record, Lynch never said anything about a golf cart. <laughs> no. Oh, I think I thought you did on uh, Tuesday. No, no, no. no. Nope. Okay. Maybe no, it might have been Coach Mark Daniels. You and him. And the... Yeah, I, I, actually, I think you're right. I think see it was that. Daniels. All right, I see we're running out of time here, and you failed to mention the Lightning guy win last night, three to one. So there you go. Okay, good. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Mike the Bulldog Bianchi, host of Open Mic on AM 740 and FM 96.9 The Game, uh, sports columnist for the Orlando Sentinel, and you get to hear the sounds of the grown man barking to take us out of the sports page every morning here on JRR. Oh, oh. This is JRR.